Daddy, we're fixing to step in here to one of our local groceries and we're gonna pick up some things for uh, dinner tonight. And I'm working on doing my fresh, healthy guacamole recipe. So, I do wanna flip this around and we'll get to shopping. We're gonna pick a red onion up just to give our uh, guacamole a little bit of color tonight. Some good looking cilantro. Cilantro. The cilantro looks really good. It's on sale for a bundle. We'll take near a bundle to make what I need to make for this evening. Let's go this away and see about finding us some jalapenos. If I'm making fresh salsa along with fresh guac, which that's my intention, we're gonna pick up probably about six to eight of these. Okay, when I'm buying them, I don't want to find anywhere that's got like puckered spots on them. And it's probably riper than what I wanted or it's gotten a little damaged from the elements. There's six. Let's go ahead and pick up eight. All right, now it's time for avocados. That's a really big bag. I don't think I want that bag. I think that bag probably came from the department back there in the meat where they have super big bags for if you're wanting to do chicken. And yeah, with the whole COVID thing, I'm really bad about wanting to lick my fingers and do my bag, so it takes me a minute, because I don't want to do that. Sometimes when you're looking for avocados, you want to look if this is still super green and the little buttons here probably going to take longer for it to ripen. This one's kind of firm, so it may not be. Whereas this one's got more green and that's still here, so that means it probably wouldn't be good to get for tonight. tomato like this, that size right there would probably work for about two to three avocados. That's a huge tomato. But I'm gonna grab romas just because they're easier to do for the weekend and keep around the house and chop up if I want them to go on salads. and add some color to our guacamole. This is an heirloom. I go through enough limes that we buy them by the bag. And if I don't think I'm gonna get through them before they might get a little old, we're gonna freeze our leftover limes and put them in our ice cube trays. And that way we keep them in a baggie in the freezer and we always have fresh lime juice. Hi everybody. Welcome back to Redneck Rhapsody. I'm Trina Welch, and I'm gonna show you how to make a healthy and good for you guacamole today. You'll have to excuse some of the noise in and out of the house. We have friends coming over, and I just wanted to take a second and show you how simple this recipe really is. Hopefully, I can give you a few tips that if you don't know, you can add them to make your life a little easier on making guac and things like that, if you already know them or you know a better one, drop it down below. I love to know things that people have in their wheelhouse on how to make something easier, faster, and better. I wanna take a second and just say, the best way to not make a mess, which I make plenty of them, I'm sure we'll have a few today, just happens, that's how I roll, is I start out trying to keep either a little trash can right here by my side or a garbage bowl. A lot of times I don't have a bag in this. When I know I've got company coming and I'm trying to make it easier, I just stick a grocery store shopping bag in there that I brought produce home earlier 
and turned it kind of wrong side out to where this is where I'm gonna chunk all my mess and hopefully all I have to do is tie the bag up and throw it in the big trash and it won't be stinking the kitchen up because it's gonna have things like onions and cilantro and things like that in it so let's get started y'all hey on my blog post which I will drop the link down below and if you've never found Redneck Rhapsody before Thanks for coming by and hanging out with me, and I hope that you join me again on my blog. But we're gonna talk avocados. I like a firm avocado. I don't want it to be that creamy, mushy kind of guacamole, but that's me. I'm gonna want mine chunkier. So I make sure I get avocados that aren't gonna be overripe. You need to put your microwave about on I don't leave mine on full percentage strength. I do like eight or seven or 70% and I put it in there for like 20 seconds. You might want to start out with 10 seconds because different microwaves have different wattage and they, they're stronger and cook faster. So just play with it, do less instead of more, but you can stick that in your microwave and it'll get to where it gets softer, but I do it like 10, 20 seconds at a time. You can also, if you're not gonna need them for a day or so, put them in a brown paper sack, roll it up, stick it on the cabinet, and something about that with the gases and all that stuff, it ripens them. I don't know how it works. I'm not a scientist. Hm. Go figure, no scientist here. This was an heirloom tomato, and it was a really pretty kind of a, a it's orangey. It's a light orange. But I like the color, and I thought, well that will just make my guacamole look really pretty tonight. And that's why I went ahead and bought a red onion today instead of doing a white onion just because I wanted to give it some color. Now my friends that are coming over tonight, they hate onion. When we go out to eat Mexican food with them, they order guacamole without onion. Who, I don't love onion. Onion's not a friend of mine. It's just not. But who can eat guacamole without a little onion? Everybody needs some onion in your guacamole. But I will not force feed them onion. So when it gets to onion in a minute, I'll have to get a separate bowl and put some guacamole in it so they don't have onion in theirs. Normally when I do this, I would go ahead and put all my onion in there, but I will probably make this whole batch and then after I get all my seasoning and have it just the way I want it, I will scoop out every, scoop out um, a couple of servings for my guests that hate onion and add my onion at the very end. But normally that would go in here with my tomato at this particular point in time. Back to my recipe, these are Roma tomatoes, so they're not really big. That was kind of a medium to large. And since I'm doing two avocados per tomato, pretty much, I'm gonna do four tonight, since there's four of us. Actually, there's five, because Noah will be rolling through and eating. I'll be doing four avocados, and we would normally do two tomatoes, but I'm using three tomatoes, since I'm using little Romas to go with that heirloom that was so pretty. So it's kind of a two to one ratio. And if you love tomatoes, you can always do it one to one. One avocado, one tomato. So that's kind of how I keep my recipe going. Two to one or one to one, just depending on the love of how much juice and tomatoes you want in it. I'm gonna go ahead and do my avocado since I would normally do my onions and that's throwing me off since I'm gonna do it a little bit different tonight because I'll have onion peels kind of everywhere and I want my cutting board to not have that on it. Okay, I cut my avocados in half. I've scored them long ways like that. I'll show you in a second how I did the other one and then I take it and do it this direction. And you have to be very careful because this is a bad big boy knife that's really sharp. That's the seed in the avocado. I do not want to just dig it out 
I put my knife in it and twist, and it picks it up. So, did everybody see that? If you didn't, you'll see it on another one. Do not throw your seed away. Just so you can see how I did this, don't cut through the skin. I just barely lay my knife there, and if my avocado is nice and ripe, which this one's pretty perfect, if it bothers you, it has color in there, you can take it out, but it's just off your seed, basically. And I score it to where, when I get ready to scoop it out, it'll already be chunked up because I don't mash mine. You want to put, I use sometimes a bowl like this if I have a small amount of produce. If not, I get like a big plastic bowl, kind of like this, and put anywhere from a teaspoon to a couple teaspoons of salt. I usually don't measure. I just pour some salt in it. I use a third of a cup of a lemon juice. If I have fresh lemon, I will use it. If I don't, I keep a bottle of it. It is really great to wash your produce. That makes a chemical deal, and like I said, I'm not a scientist, but I do know it washes your produce really well. Your soft skin stuff, like my herbs, my grapes, uh, zucchinis and, and squash are kind of on the fence, but like um, plums, peaches, anything that's a softer skin, I leave in that bath for about two to three minutes. Then it goes over into another bowl I have on the other side of the sink, and I let it just sit in the water for a second and wash it off, and then take it out and put it in a strainer, let it strain really well. Then I lay it out on a towel and let it completely dry before I store it. So, with chemicals being what they are, germs and sickness being what it is nowadays, I feel it's vitally important just because you got bugs on stuff y'all it came out of a field somewhere it's got some bugs somewhere but I let it bathe in that and if I'm out of lemon juice by some chance I will use vinegar white vinegar and it just depends on how big my bowl is whether I pour a half cup or a cup of vinegar in there and we'll use it in place of the other but that's just my tip on that. So this cutting board has my tomato juice and it's kind of yucky. I've got this little cutting board that I keep for doing things that I want to be super easy and it is delegated pretty much to the chopper I'm fixing to use because it does not dull the blades on it. So this is just like a really good plastic type cutting board and it does only produce, no meats. Depending on how many times you push that button depends on how fine that onion gets. I do not like huge chunks of onion in mine. I'm gonna want mine chopped up fairly small. 13 times of mashing that makes these blades that are up in here go all the way around for a complete revolution. So everything should be cut. After I rake those big pieces down, I sometimes will hit it again, just like I did. I'm only doing a half of onion tonight because it was a large onion. You can do white, yellow, red, whatever your fancy is. I thought the purple or the red onion would make it pretty. Now we're going to work on, before I go to those, this doesn't need to be hot. So let's do some lime juice. I have lime cubes all the time. I will put one or two of these in a small dish, depending on whether I'm using two avocados, one cube for two avocados, one cube to maybe two, I would probably melt two, but I don't know that I'd use the whole amount for four avocados. So, that's my tip on how you keep fresh lime juice at the house all the time. It would work with lemon too. I'm just not gonna use lemon in as many of my recipes as I do lime. 
The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do my garlic before I start doing jalapenos. Because jalapenos, mm, jalapenos. Some of these are little bitty baby cloves. So I'm just going to put two down in here. I used to never use a garlic press ever. I have fallen in love with a garlic press. Let's see if we can get those. Those three fit down in there just right. So. Oop. That went well. And that was three small garlics. This is a decent size clove right here. Matter of fact, it's almost not even wanting to fit down in there. So. It's totally up to you on the amount of garlic that you would use. If you have food safe gloves, I suggest wearing them to do jalapenos, especially if you wear contacts or you're really bad about touching your face and stuff. The easiest way for me to do jalapenos is I cut them in half I take a regular spoon and go this way so maybe everybody can see from up above. I run it around the top and I run my teaspoon down it over my garbage bowl and I keep it away from my face as much as possible. This is where your heat comes from. It comes from this vein so you want to devein it and deseed it all with just raking a spoon down it if you can. I'm going to take these and just make them a little bit smaller by cutting it in half again and putting them on my chopping board over here that doesn't have tomato juice to squirt all over me. Usually I just use one chopping board y'all to do all of this but I'm trying not to make the biggest mess in the world I think I'm making it even bigger. I'm gonna go ahead and dig all of our stuff out. And this is how I do it to make it easy. Get a spoon. Sometimes I'll get a tablespoon, but the teaspoon's laying here and already got garlic and stuff on it, so. I take it and run it around my avocado. I try to flip it upside down to where I can see if there's any really dark spots because avocados will get dark spots. It happens, y'all but that way I could scrape them off if there is. So I flipped it, I'm gonna cut it there, and I'm gonna sit there and cut it like this. And this is how I have learned that I make the least amount of mess and do the least amount of damage to my kitchen, my fingers, the chopping board, and not just having it everywhere. Our, country, our company has arrived, and my boys are telling y'all that Miss Tasha is here. She says she's not getting on the camera, though, so I tried to talk her into it. We're going to go ahead and pour about half of our lime juice on this. I juiced, I think, three, so it should be about one and a half. I'm going to add cumin, and I'm going to say I do about one teaspoon to two avocados and one tomato. So since I have four avocados, I would do teaspoon and a half to two teaspoons. I hit it with very little black pepper because that's just not my favorite seasoning, but it does add something to it. We're gonna go with a little bit of salt. Well, to some people it's a lot of salt. Probably about a teaspoon and a half for this big a bowl. I'm gonna stir it up. And I really should have my chips out, but I don't. So I'm not gonna worry about tasting it right now. Before I serve it, I will definitely taste it and make sure I have enough seasoning, have enough heat, all that good stuff. So, if you're looking for a recipe that you don't want a ton of calories and you don't want a lot of stuff, if you like it kind of chunky, you can get your masher out and mash it and make it be any way you want to on the texture of it. You can put it in your processor and really cream it up if you like doing that. But 
This is how we do healthy guacamole at Redneck Rhapsody. Happy eating. I'm going to go make a margarita to go with this. So cheers, y'all. Thanks for hanging out. Subscribe down below. Hit the bell if you don't want to miss what I do next time. And if you're not following us on social media, I invite you to jump over on Instagram and Facebook or anywhere else that you can find Redneck Rhapsody and follow me. Bye, y'all.